Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for the appearance among us of great men and women who inspire us to a greatness beyond most of our imaginings. This day, we honor a man of faith, Billy Graham, whose preaching and teaching was transformative in our nation, calling us to ever greater faithfulness and trust in you. We thank you for his great witness and for modeling for us all the blessings of faithfulness to you, to the gospel, to his vocation in life, and as a husband, father, and friend. As we continue this celebration of honor, grant that all who attend to these proceedings might transcend smallness and limitation and emerge as people desirous of being our best selves in service to all our brothers and sisters, as you might call us to be. Dear Lord, thank you for inspiring such greatness in Billy Graham and continue to bless the United States of America. Amen. Welcome, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of the Graham family, and all our guests on behalf of the Senate. The Speaker and I are honored you're with us. The man we recognize today shared the gospel with more people face to face than anyone else in history. His clear voice thundered through packed tents stadiums, auditoriums, parks, and plazas the world over. His warmth and graciousness lit up living rooms and touched hundreds of millions of hearts. And this Scotch-Irish son of dairy farmers became a trusted friend and counselor to American presidents and powerful leaders around the globe. At first blush, the life of Reverend Billy Graham sounds like a personal success story par excellence. A determined young man finds a strong faith at age 16. He starts paddling out in a canoe to practice his preaching on swamp birds and alligators. And eventually, through his own strength and personal greatness, he founds a world-changing ministry leads historic revivals, and eventually lies here in honor in the United States Capitol while a grateful nation pays respects. A man-made success story for the ages. But the most remarkable thing about Billy Graham is that this isn't his story. Billy knew better than anyone that fame and an impressive Rolodex weren't the real standards of success. His aim was simpler, sharing the good news with as many souls as he possibly could. And when there were triumphs, Billy insisted they were not man-made in the slightest. The secret of my work, he explained, is God. I would be nothing without him. That is what made Billy Graham America's pastor. That is how he inspired countless life-changing conversions. Not his great talents, so much as his deep humility, his unwavering fidelity to faith and family, his plain-spoken preaching of essential truths without ego or embellishment. Billy Graham lifted up our nation, not because he occupied the spotlight so masterfully, 
but because he knew he wasn't the one who belonged in it. He was just a happy instrument in the hands of his creator. And so we trust that he was right, that his true reward is something far surpassing all of his achievements here on earth. A warm welcome for this good and faithful servant into his eternal home. The Senate and the nation are so very grateful for his service. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Billy Graham woke up every day and did just that. He shared his love of God. That love had no end. That love had no barriers. He ministered to all walks, from some of the greats whose statues line this very hall. Eisenhower, King, Ford and Reagan, to everyday citizens lining up to pay their respects. No matter how long the lines grew, no matter how much the times changed, his message never diminished. That love was so infectious, wasn't it? The man had such a gift for connecting with people. When listening to Reverend Graham, it's as if he is right there next to you, praying with you, turning you to the glory of God. He did not profess to have all the right answers. Look to the Bible, he would say. But he sure did point us to all the right questions and challenge us to look up and to look within, to reflect and to repent. And in those moments, when we felt weak in spirit, when our country was on its knees, he reminded us, he convinced us, that is exactly when we find our grace and our strength. Few loved others as Billy Graham did, and few were as beloved as he was. Here lies America's pastor. A man made great, not by who he was, but by who he served with all of his heart in all of his soul, in all his mind. We give thanks to God for the life and the works of this humble servant, now and forever. Thank you, Speaker Ryan and Leader McConnell. And most importantly, thank you to the entire Graham family for honoring us with your presence here today. Thank you. In the spring of 1934, Billy Graham's father allowed a group of Charlotte businessmen to use a portion of the family's dairy farm to gather for a day of prayer. On that day, the men prayed for the city. They prayed that out of Charlotte, the Lord would raise up someone to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We are here today, more than 80 years later, because that prayer was truly answered. Billy Graham was 15 years old at the time. Just a few months later, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. That choice 
didn't just change Billy's life, it changed our lives. It changed our country, and it changed, in fact, the entire world. The North Carolina farm boy walked out of those fields into a great and beautiful history. Starting at a small Bible school in Florida, he soon led a nationwide revival. From a large tent in Los Angeles to 100,000 people in a single day at Yankee Stadium, to more than 2 million people at Madison Square Garden over 16 weeks in 1957. And I remember that because my father said to me, come on, son. And by the way, he said, come on, mom. Let's go see Billy Graham at Yankee Stadium. And it was something very special. But Americans came in droves to hear that great young preacher, Fred Trump, was a big fan. Fred Trump was my father. In London, Tokyo, Seoul, Bogota, Moscow, New Delhi, Saigon, Johannesburg, and scores of other places all over the world, Reverend Graham shared the power of God's Word with more than 200 million people in person and countless others through television, and radio where people loved to watch and listen. In 1978, with the support of the Catholic bishop, who would soon become Pope John Paul II, Reverend Graham went to Poland and spoke of the meaning of the cross to a people suffering under the soulless oppression of communism. Billy Graham carried his message around the world, but his heart, as Franklin will tell you, was always in America. He took his message to the poorest places, to the downtrodden, and to the brokenhearted, to inmates in prison, and to the overlooked and the neglected. He felt a great passion for those that were neglected. Everywhere he went, Reverend Graham delivered the same beautiful message. God loves you. That was his message. God loves you. We can only imagine the number of lives touched by the preaching and the prayers of Billy Graham. The hearts he changed, the sorrows he eased, and the joy he brought to so many. The testimony is endless. Today, we give thanks for this extraordinary life. And it's very fitting that we do so right here in the rotunda of the United States Capitol, where the memory of the American people is enshrined. Here in this room, we are reminded that America is a nation sustained by prayer. The painting to my left is of the pilgrims as they embark for America, holding fast to the Bible and bowing their heads in prayer. Along these walls, we see the faces of Americans who prayed as they stood on the Lexington Green, who prayed as they headed west, prayed as they headed into battle, and prayed as they marched for justice and always marched for victory. Around us stand the statues of heroes who led the nation in prayer during the great and difficult times, from Washington to Lincoln to Eisenhower to King. And today, in the center of this great chamber lies legendary Billy Graham an ambassador for Christ who reminded the world of the power of prayer and the gift of God's grace. Today, we honor him as only three private citizens before him 
have been so honored. And like the faithful of Charlotte once did, today we say a prayer for our country, that all across this land, the Lord will raise up men and women like Billy Graham to spread a message of love and hope to every precious child of God. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Just as I am without one plea, but that the blood was shed for me, and that thou be. Oh. 
Let us bow our heads for the benediction. Almighty God, the fountain of every blessing, we praise you for your greatness and goodness that gave our nation and world the gift of your servant, Evangelist William Franklin Graham, Jr. We thank you for using him to preach your gospel around the world, to counsel and pray for national and global leaders, and to invite the multitudes to start and sustain an experiential relationship with you. Lord, we're grateful for his scandal-free life of integrity, characterized by conduct that was above reproach. You blessed him through his humility and commitment to you to bring deliverance to those held captive by sin, to restore sight to the morally and ethically blind, and to set on the path of freedom those shackled by addictions and despair. Thank you, Lord, that the force of Billy Graham's convictions transcended the boundaries that divide humanity, creating a spirit of oneness. Inspired by his great life, challenge us all to become salt and light to our generation. Use us, O oh God, as you used evangelist Billy Graham, so that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will always be acceptable to you. I pray in the name of Billy Graham's savior and closest friend, Jesus Christ. Amen.